Pelican Rapids High School Band's 2023 Winter Concert. We begin, as always, with our seventh grade band. They've been doing extremely well, and uh, God, they sound great. They, they sound, to me, again, better than some high school bands that I've heard. It's just really, really good. And they're just, they're well balanced, and they're, uh, they're just, they've got great positive energy that, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just great. They, they're positive, they're upbeat, they're energetic, they're nice, and uh, it's been a real treat working with these guys, so. Uh, seventh grade band, our next piece is called Rock Island Trail by Robert Sheldon. And uh, again, these guys have just been uh, really good attitude about this next piece. It's called Irish Tune from County Derry, and uh, many of you who were in band might have played it as high schoolers. This is a different arrangement uh, of it that um, basically is is written for seventh grade, and it's uh, it's a great tune. It's a, it's a setting of the tune Danny Boy that we know in America. This is Irish Tune from County Derry.
So just like with video games, uh, as the students progress through this whole thing, they sort of unlock new levels. And so they've unlocked now the 16th note level. So you're going to hear four notes per beat. They go pretty fast. It's like sakatakata, sakatakata. Now that's good if it's all just one note, but on this tune it's not. It's all four different notes. So it's like dakatakata. Really, really hard stuff. This is called Fanfare for the 16th Empire by Randall Standridge. So what you hear with that tuba and the timpani, or timpani back there, are, uh, we're, we're learning the, the timpani. It's really hard because we have to tune them up for every song. And we start off by really hearing the low pitch and trying to match the pitch to the tuba. And then as we get good uh, at that, then we start matching the pitch, which is like two or three octaves higher to try to get the, the drums uh, in tune. So right now they're at their earliest stages of learning the, the kettle drums or the timpani back there. And uh, that's what's going on with the, with the tuba going on. So anyway, our last piece uh, for the seventh grade portion here, we're going to bring you uh, a little sunshine. We're going to take you to the Caribbean. This is called Jamaica Jack.
First you feel the bite or sting, then your heart begins to race. Lastly, the venom works its way through your body, causing pain, hallucinations, paralysis, and then dot, dot, dot. This is venom. members as well as awesome players but anyway that's uh, going to be what happens at this next piece it's called a prehistoric suite and it's in four movements and they're all depicting like prehistoric scenes uh, mainly with dinosaurs so the first one for example is called stegosaurus the gladiator so you can see that they both probably have the armor and the, the shield stuff so you're going to have some stegosaurus gladiator music in uh, movement one the second is called Brontosaurus, the Gentle Giant. Then three is Pterodactyls, Graceful Giants of the Sky. And we conclude with four, the battle. Uh, the battle is between the Tyrannosaurus and the Triceratops. And it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. You know, you can kind of, 
if you were going to write a piece of music that depicted dinosaurs and, and, and prehistoric times, what would you do, you know? So you can kind of listen for some of the things that he does uh, to create these, these uh, sounds. This is Prehistoric Suite by Paul Jennings.
Nick back there, man. Great passion. Okay, now, the Queen Anne's Revenge was an early 18th century ship, most famously used as a flagship by Edward Teach, better known by his nickname Blackbeard. The ship had quite a history, being built in 1710 in England as a merchant ship, then captured by the French, who began using it as a slave trading ship. It was then captured by Blackbeard and his pirates, who after less than a year in 1718, ran the ship aground off the coast of North Carolina, where it got stuck and then it basically sunk. Uh, and it was lost forever, uh, you know, since then, until 1996, when it was discovered in 28 feet of water, about a mile off the coast of North Carolina. This piece depicts the ship and crew after it was captured by Blackbeard and his band of pirates. So again, listen for pirate music, sword fighting, and sea adventures in The Legend of Queen Anne's Revenge by Robert W. Smith.
So after all that heavy, uh, descriptive music, now we've got something nice that you'll listen to and recognize. It is Adele, Rolling in the Deep.
All right. Hide and Seek is a piece of music written and recorded by Imogen Heap. She takes her voice and processes it through a synthesizer keyboard, so the keyboard can actually turn her voice into chords as she plays and sings. Very cool. Through this, she explores all sorts of strange and awesome harmonies. Chords that you've probably never heard before. They're just clusters and really weird, but very cool. The piece was used in many shows and movies and became very popular. And in fact, she be it became so popular that she was asked to revise it so they could use it in the Broadway show, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. This is Hide and Seek.
next piece will take you to Africa and feature the two oldest instruments on record, the flute and the drum. The piece will feature Eva Rustand on the solo flute part, backed up by the rest of the band. Eva was selected by audition to be part of an all-state, or Eva was selected by audition to be an all-state flute player, which means she's among the top 20 high school flute players in the entire state of Minnesota right now, regardless of school size. All-state band does not divide schools up according to size like we do in nearly every other activity, and needless to say, the band is made up of nearly all suburban metro area students from very large schools. Yet Eva was selected and just completed her experience by performing live on the stage of Orchestra Hall in Minneapolis in February. This is Telling Stories to the Sea, featuring the very talented Eva Rustand on flute. And we're going to do a quick little mic check uh, before we start.
All right, before we play our last piece, I'd like to thank you for coming to our winter concert and for waiting a week or so. We had a light issue in here, and I think it's been resolved, hopefully. It is a true, uh, it's truly a pleasure for us to be able to share with you some of the music that we create every day in school, and for these students to experience playing live music uh, in front of a live audience. If you think about it, you know, there's a lot, not a lot of just acoustic stuff like this. These instruments are made of wood, they're made of metal, they're made of uh, skin back there on the, on the percussion and stuff, and there's nothing plugged in at all except for this mic right here and then Eva's mic, but it's just really pretty cool that we're able to, to come together and do this and then to be able to play for you guys, so we really appreciate it. Our last piece is a very difficult one, uh, college stuff, written mostly in 5-8 time, which consists of two beats per measure, but the two beats are different lengths giving the music a very frantic and energetic feel. So the first beat is three eighth notes, and the second one is two eighth notes, so you get this one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and it is uh, very, very challenging. These guys have totally uh, risen to the occasion. So, the griffin is a Middle Eastern mythological beast having the head, forepart, and wings of an eagle, and the body and hind legs of a lion. So you'll be able to hear the 5-8 stuff along with some uh, Middle Eastern type stuff. This is a really, really great piece called Flight of the Griffin by Brian Balmages. <laughs> 